All right, moving on to number nine. It says, last year, Mrs. Larson's annual salary was $67,438. And she received a raise and now earns $75,530 annually. She is paid bi-weekly, which means she gets 26 paychecks. It says, what was her bi-weekly paycheck last year? So I'm going to take the $67,438, and I'm going to divide that by 26. And I find that last year, she had a salary of $2,593.77. And it says, round to the nearest cents, I believe it said 0.769, but the 9 causes you to round that up to a 77. Question B says, what's her salary this year? Well, her, her paycheck salary this year, it's the 27,530, divided by the 26, she's still paid bi-weekly, and she earned $2,905 now with her raise. It says, on a bi-weekly basis, how much does Mrs. Larson earn more now as a result to the nearest cent and percent increase? So notice here that there's two questions here, and you want to make sure that you answer both or it will be half wrong. So first thing, I have to take the 2905, and I'm going to subtract the 2593.77. That will give me the difference to the nearest cent, which is $311.23. In order to find the percent change, you put the difference, which in this case is the 311.23, and you divide it by the original value or the original amount that she was earning, which is the 2593.77. And when you divide that, you get an answer that looks like this, 0.1199. And so if we move this over, we've got 11.99%, which brings us to 12%. Okay, number 10, rap singer and writer Crazy K Loop is paid 8.5% royalties on his CD sales and, and uh, music downloads. Last year, he sold 1.86 million CDs and 2.1 million downloads. The CDs were sold for $6.50 each, make sure you put a zero there, and the music downloads were $1.19 each. So question A says, what was the total revenue received for the CDs? You're going to take the 1.86 million, which is 1860000, and you're going to multiply that by the $6.50 a piece, and you get $12,090,000. Next, we're going to take the downloads, which is 2,100,000, and we're going to multiply that by the $1.19 for each download. And that gives me a total of $2,499,000. Question C says, how much did Crazy K receive in royalties last year? Well, you're going to take the $1.2090 million, so the $12,090,000, and you're going to add the $2,499,000 for a total of... 100, or I'm sorry, $14,589,000 is the total sales, and Crazy K gets 8.5%, so moving that over as a decimal, we're going to multiply it by 0 .085, and we find that his total royalty pay was $1,240,065. All right, the next question. Mr. Pembruchian wrote a textbook for college nursing students. He receives a 4% royalty based on the total sales of the book. 
If the book sells for $45.99 and he sold 24,576 copies last year, how much did he receive in royalty payments? So the first step is to find the total sales. So I'm going to get that by taking the $45.99 that it was for each book and multiply it by the number of books sold, which is the 24,576. And I find out that the total of the the total of all the sales is one million one thirty thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Let me rewrite that so it's legible. Two hundred fifty dollars and twenty four cents. So step two is total sales. multiplied by royalty commission. So in this case, I'm going to take the 1,130,250.24 and I'm going to multiply it by his royalty commission, which is the 4%. So as a decimal, that's 0.04. And what he earned last year for this book was $45,210.01. All right. The next one says Bell Road Motors pays commission to its sales car staff. They're paid a percent of the profit of the dealership not on the, that they make on the car, not the price of selling the car. So we're going to create a split piecewise function. So here we have uh, P of X for profit. And the first thing says that it's 13%, so it's 0.13. Be careful not to put 0.13% um, it is 0.13 or 13%, but when creating the piecewise function, it has to be as a decimal, so it's just 0.13 times the profit when it says here that the profit is less than, um, actually just less than, not equal to, less than $600. The next thing it says is that when it's 600 to 1700, it's 19%. So it's going to be 0.19% of the profit when it's $600, where it's greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to $1,700. And finally, if the profit is above 1700, it's 22%. So it's 0.22p when p is greater than 1,700. Be very careful. Make sure, notice here that I have the equal signs here, but not here. They can't be in both places. They need to be based on the question in one place or the other. So make sure you're cautious when writing this piecewise function. <clears throat> Number 13, it says Mrs. Watson works in a clothing line warehouse. She receives a salary of $8.90 per hour and $0.29 cents per unit that she produces. Last year, she worked 40 hours and produced 953 units. So question A, be very careful that you see here. Question A, there are three parts to question A. So make sure that you answer all the questions. The first question is, what was the piecework pay? So she completed 953 units. She gets paid 29 cents per unit. So her piecework pay was $276.37. That's the first question. The second question was, what was her total pay, total hourly pay? So it says here that she worked 40 hours, and she worked at $8.90 an hour. And so that's a total of $356. The final question was what was her total pay? 
So I'm going to take the $276.37 and add the $356 to it. And we find that her total pay was $632.37. So there's three parts to this. First part, second part, third part. Make sure that you answer all three. Part B, it's as if her boss offered her straight $13 per hour and no piecework pay, which she earned more or less than the pay, um, piecework pay system. So it's saying at $13 an hour, if she only worked the, if she worked the 40 hours, but she doesn't get paid per piece, what would she earn? Is it more or less? Well, 520 is definitely less than 632, so the answer here is she would earn less. And it said, what would her weekly, total weekly salary be if she had produced zero units? Well, she still worked the 40 hours, so she still gets the $356 for the 40 hours. She just doesn't get any pay for the piecework pay. All right, number 14. When Ethan started at his current job, his employer gave him three days of paid vacation time with the promise of six additional paid vacation day for each two-year period he remains with the company to a maximum of six work weeks. So six times five days in a work week, his maximum is going to be 30 days of vacation. It says let X represent the number of years he worked for his employer and Y represent the total paid vacation days. Write an expression that models the relationship between these variables. Well, the total vacation days, he's going to get six days for every two year period. So it says X is number of years, so we've got to take it to X divided by two so that we can get it down to the year plus he started off with three vacation days. It has been eight years since Ethan began his working for his employer. How many ba paid vacation days has he earned? Well, he gets six per year in this, or per two years, and he's been here eight years, so eight divided by two plus the three, which gives you six times four because 2 goes into 8 4 times plus 3. Well, 6 times 4 is 24 plus the 3. So he is currently at 27 days. And it says, when will he reach the maximum? Well, he gets 6 for every 2 years, which means he gets 3 per year for a maximum of 30. So he's already at 27. He can only afford one more year, so it's going to be in the ninth year. Number 15, it says Nancy's employee benefits includes health care coverage. She contributes 23% of the cost. She gets paid semi-monthly, which is 24, and $156 is taken out. So the first step is we're going to take 24 and multiply it by the 156 that's taken out. And we find that her total that she pays every year is 37.44. It wants to know what the employer contributes. So 100% minus the 23% means that we're looking at what is the 77%. Well, we know that 23% of the total that's paid equals 37.44. And then just algebraically, if we divide both sides by 0.33, we know that X, or the 100%, is 16,278.26. So this is the 100%. Now we've got to subtract the 23%, which is the 37.44. And we find that the total that the employer paid was $12,534.26, which represents the 